Thank you so much for joining me today. So today's video, I think it's going to be a fun video. It is all about watering cans. Yes. I have three different watering cans. One I hauled in a thrift haul. One my mother gave me. And then one I bought, I think last year or maybe the year before from the at-home store. And I thought it would be fun to get on Pinterest, find some photos of some watering cans and see if I could duplicate the look. Now, these I'm going to call Pinterest inspired. They are not exactly, but I think they turned out really cute and I'm very happy with them. Now, if you are a professional painter, a professional faux painter, um, yeah, don't cringe when you watch this video. This is just me getting in my little craft area that I have and just playing with some paint and just seeing what I can come up with. And I do also use the rust technique that I used a few videos back. Um, and I will link that video in the description box below. So it's just me having fun and just seeing, you know, what I can do. So bear in mind, they are Pinterest inspired. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching and let's get to painting these watering cans. Okay, so for DIY number one, this is the little watering can that I hauled in a thrift haul in a previous video. And this is my inspiration. So let's see if I can do it. So I've already painted it this gray color, but before I did, I had to put a layer of Mod Podge over it so my paint would stick. And I did mix this color because I didn't have the right gray. So I mixed some black and white and got this. Now I'm just taking some black and I'm just, literally it looks like I'm just giving it polka dots all over it. And y'all, when I started this, I'm gonna tell you, I was a bit scared. I was like, what have I done? But I just kept going and kept going. I was like, I can make this work. So worst case, I can just paint over it, right? So I'm just adding my little polka dots or my black. This is like a little sea sponge type thing. I think you get them from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just putting the black paint all over it and kind of trying to figure out in my head, what have I done? What am I gonna do? How's this gonna look? Is this gonna work out? So that's what I'm doing here. So once I had all the little black, you know, on there kind of blended in, I knew I was gonna have to do something else to kind of get the old galvanized look that I wanted. So what I did was I think I took, uh, I took some of the gray paint, if you can see I mixed it there, and I just kind of started going over the black just to kind of blend it in a little bit where it wasn't so harsh that I needed the depth underneath. And that's what I'm doing now. And like I said, I mix this paint. It's just some black and white, literally just mixed till I got the color that I wanted. So I'm using my same sponge. I didn't rinse it off. I didn't do anything. I just literally dipped it in the paint and started. And as you can see, it's starting to blend it in and look really nice. So then I'm taking just a little bit of white and again, going over all of that with my same sponge. Again, I didn't rinse it. I didn't wash it out. I'm literally just layering it on top of each other. And I'm just kind of putting that all over and just kind of getting it to look as much like a galvanized watering can that I can. And I'm kind of starting to see while I'm doing this, I'm kind of starting to see, okay, this, this might actually work out. So I'm very happy with it so far. So this is what it looks like once I've done all of that. And so now I'm going to do the rust technique. And y'all, this is an amazing technique. I simply love it. But doesn't that look real? You can see it's the ceramic one. So I've mixed my Elmer's glue, craft glue, and I'm taking my cinnamon. And instead of pouring it over it, I just kind of dip my brush in it. And now I'm trying to focus on where the rust would be if this was really metal and old. And I'm focusing on like the seams. And I'm just placing it where I think that it would just naturally rust if this was actually an old galvanized watering can. As you can see here, I'm just kind of tapping it on. I tap 
I stick it in the glue, then I stick it in my cinnamon and just kind of tap it on. And this works for me. Some people, you know, put your glue or Mod Podge on and then pour your cinnamon over. Whatever works for you. This just happens to work for me. And now for DIY number two. This is my inspiration and I love it. I love the green. I love everything about it. And this is a watering can that my mother gave me. So I mixed this color as well. I just played with some colors until I kind of got it the green that I wanted. I'm not sure what they were. I'll try to figure out what the colors were and list them in the description box below. But I'm just covering this really well with the color that I mixed. And of course you can do whatever color you choose. I just happened to find this picture on Pinterest and really liked it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of, and I'm just doing a little bit inside just in case it's seen. And this is how it looks. Now I'm taking my antique wax and I'm gonna kind of brush over this because when I put the rust on it, I want it to have kind of like some depth and base behind it. I don't know what I was thinking, but you know, it is what it is. That was my idea when I started using my antique wax. But I really wish I would have dabbed it on with a wet wipe instead of brushing it on like I did. And as if you can see, I did take a wet wipe and try to wipe off some of the excess so it wasn't so harsh. But I think I would have done that differently. And the inspiration piece had a little bit of white, you know, here and there. So that's what I'm doing here with my sponge. I'm just kind of putting some white just random places, no particular rhyme or reason, just wherever I thought. And um, now I'm gonna use that same rust technique. I dip it in the Elmer's craft glue and then dip it into the cinnamon. And I'm sorry this is out of frame. I didn't realize it at the time, but I think it does get better. But I'm just kind of dabbing it on all over where, you know, I think the rust would be and kind of, you know, taking some tips from the inspiration picture. Like I said, it's not exactly, but I'm very happy with it. I think it turned out really cute. So just dabbing on the cinnamon with my glue. Just dab, dab, dab. That's what I'm doing. Now on this particular one, a lot of the rust was focused on the spout and the handles and stuff. It was a lot on the inspiration picture. Was That was where the main focus was. I did add a little more rust um, on the body of the watering can than the inspiration did, but I think it turned out pretty good. You just have to let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Inspiration number three. This was in a watering can picture I found on Pinterest, and this is the one I bought from the at-home store. And once again, I have mixed some colors, trying to get that pretty turquoise color. Mine is a little darker than the Inspiration photo, but I think it, it works out in the end. I do wish that I would have had it a little lighter but overall, I'm really happy with it, you know. So here is the antique wax. Again, this one, I don't have a top on mine like the inspiration photo, but it really focused the rust on the spout. And since I didn't have the top on mine like the inspiration photo, I decided I would focus on the spout, on the handle. And y'all, you see what I'm doing right here? Wish I hadn't have done that. Really, really wish I hadn't have done that, but in the end, it does work out. I just wish I would have, I don't know. That part, I was not happy with, but like I said, it does work out in the end. You know, and it's trial and error, y'all, trial and error. I was trying to dull down the blue because it was so much brighter than the inspiration photo, but I think it, it's fine, it's fine. It's just an inspiration, Donna. It does not have to be exactly. That's what inspired looks mean. Hello. But now I'm just gonna focus on the handle and the water spout 
part of this watering can since this one didn't have the top like the inspiration photo did. So this, I'm still using my wax and um, I really wish I would have done that differently <laughs> looking back. But also, I know what the end result looks like and it does turn out. So, you know, you just do what you can do, right? just really focusing on the water spout part of this watering can and in the inspiration they didn't do the whole spout they mostly focused on the top part where the water comes out I don't even know what you call that but I just kind of since I didn't have the top I focused on the whole spout and once I do this there I am doing that again I wish I wouldn't have done that but oh well once I get this part done, then I'm going to do the rust technique there again with my Elmer's glue and my cinnamon. Y'all, this is the best technique for making things look like really rusted. It looks and feels so real. I am still just blown away by this technique. But once I get this done, I let it dry and then this one will be finished. You know, I, looking back now, I really wish I hadn't uh, like brushed the rust on because rust really doesn't <laughs> rust like that. I wish I would have done a different, different technique, but it does work out in the end after all. So I know I keep saying that, but it really does work out. Just keep doing it until you get it right. <laughs> What do you think? I think they're cute. And just remember, they are Pinterest inspired. They are not going to be exact because the watering cans I have are not the exact same kind or size. But I do love the way that they turned out. And it was fun. I had a whole lot of fun. And just remember, y'all. I had to remind myself of this, it's just paint. It is just paint. You can always paint over it and start over with a clean slate. That's all, I mean, it's just paint. And even if you've already done the rust technique and then you paint over that, it just adds texture. So it's a win-win, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit that little red subscribe button, click on that little bell. It'll notify you every time I make an upload, which I upload every Wednesday. And also, if you have an Instagram account, come follow me on Instagram. I'm a little more active over there. I say good morning every morning, you know, share bits and pieces of my life, share Buster more frequently over there. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you come over and follow me on Instagram as well. And with all of that being said, I hope you have a great day. And until next time, bye y'all.